the uh, 401 Eastern, and uh, we've got a good number of attendees on, so why don't we kick things off here? Uh, thank you all for joining. This is part three of our Cocktails and Competitive Health Insurance series. So um, just going to do a quick recap, and then we'll get into today's discussion. But in March, we went through a, a little PEO strategy in our Cocktails and Competitive Health Insurance webinar. And then last month in April, we did our special Purple Producers webinar. We launched our Difference Card Level Funding Solution. Really excited about that. It was a great webinar last month. And I think we're really going to top that this month. We've got two awesome guest speakers with us today, uh, Jen Walsh from Genuine Shift and Mario Martinez Jr. So we've got really an awesome lineup and a, and a good discussion that we're going to have on top of the margarita celebration that Diane is going to uh, walk us through today. So today's discussion is going to be about winning new business now. And we've really seen some interesting trends over the past 12 months. Some of our brokers have struggled a little bit with this virtual environment. Others have really embraced it and they've used it as a way to disrupt the market. They've taken advantage of things like social selling, and they're really starting to win a lot of new business using some digital sales techniques. So that's really what we're going to start to focus on today. Hopefully you all can take away from today's discussion a couple of good tips and maybe a, a new tool or two that you can use to help win more new business, go out there and prospect, but also maybe just communicate better with your existing customers. So hopefully you take some, uh, some of those tips away from us today. Jen and Mario have got some incredible insights to share. They're both trusted advisors to the Difference Card team. We've had both of them speak at past uh, sales conferences, one that was actually in person. I think Jen came to our, uh, our White Plains one one year, and then uh, Mario did a virtual uh, sales conference for us. So both trusted advisors, they've got a lot of great insights to share with you today. I'm really excited to share all that insight with our broker community and help you all to win some new business now. So with that, Taylor, why don't you introduce yourselves and we'll go from there. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Taylor Britt. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing and Sales Media for The Difference Card. So happy to have you guys here with us today. Um, I'm in charge of a lot of really fun things at The Difference Card, but this is probably my favorite thing <laughs> that we've put together. So happy to have you guys here. As Chris mentioned, um, you guys are in great hands with Mario and Jen. We've had both of them speak to us. At one point, I tried to start like a Jen a Jen, fan wall, a Jen Walsh fan club. Um, and then Mario's also got gold. He is, he knows his stuff. So you guys are in good hands. Mario, I'm going to pass it to you. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey guys, excited to be here with you. I'm Mario Martinez Jr., the CEO and founder of Bengresso. We are the world's largest digital sales training and technology company. So excited to be with you guys. And we're going to have some awesome tips that we're gonna roll out for you guys today. Great, and I'm Jen Walsh and happy to be here. A little over 30 years now, I've been specializing in the employee benefits world. I've been a broker, I've managed brokers, I've led teams and over the last three years, specialized as an independent business consultant, helping high performing teams grow and then keep by leading their clients. And like you, I've had to pivot. And so hoping to share some really practical tips that you and your teams could put into practice tomorrow to help grow and better communicate with your existing clients. So thanks for including me. Thanks, Jen. And uh, hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Calderon. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer for The Difference Card. I've got the pleasure of working with our 50 plus uh, sales and service associates across the country. And uh, one name that's not on our intros right now is Diane from Root, probably our most important guest speaker. So I'm going to uh, pass the baton to her. And this is the time everybody go grab that Root mixer, grab your salt tin. If you've got some tequila and some ice, go grab that. And I'm going to stop the screen share. And then Taylor, why don't you highlight and spotlight Diane there? Right. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me, Taylor and Chris. I appreciate the opportunity to come and shake up some drinks with you guys again. Um, today we're doing the au pair margarita, uh, which I love. 
I hope you guys love it just as well. So you have your bottle of root au pair mix and it should have been sent. Uh, you should have a tin of chili lime sauce. I added a little heat this time. You might wanna open the tin and there's a little plastic bag. You have to open it and just kind of let it loose. Um, so it should just all lie flat like that. Uh, your tequila and then whatever type of glass you wanna use. If you want it on the rocks, um, you want it served up in a really big fishbowl glass, whatever you like. Um, so I'm gonna let everyone get that. Um, my little trick is that I use a lime wedge to get the sides of my margarita glass um, a little wet there so it can the salt can stick to it. If you don't have a lime wedge because you're in the office or something, you know, water will do whatever you have. Um, and then this should fit exactly in your little rimmer. So you have a nice little edge. I love it. That looks great. Um, then if you want to shake it up, let's do that. So I'll show you this. So I have my shaker. I have lots of ice in my shaker. Um, and we're going to start with root. So I like to put two parts root in there. So whatever kind of measuring, or you can just eyeball it. If you don't have something to measure it with, that's fine. Um, you can just do the count one, two. And then you have your tequila. I'm going to use some Patron because that's kind of one of my favorites, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of other tequilas that you may not have or might not be used to. Um, this is 21 seeds. This is a cucumber jalapeno margarita, and I'm not sure if you've heard of it, but it's another female owned business. So I love to highlight that. Um, and they really, their tagline is girls call the shot. So I love them. It's very spicy. So if you like a spicy drink, definitely add that tequila to your margarita. I also love mezcal. And this happens to be one of my favorites, Montalobos. They're um, obviously out of Mexico, but the agave that they use in here is really smoky and fresh. So if you like a smoky type of tequila, I definitely use more of a mezcal. Um, but I love all tequila. So whatever you want to use is great. So let's go with our Patron. I did two parts root and you can do one part Patron or however strong you like it. Not sure how good or bad of a day you're having so far. So if you're having an okay day, then it's two to one. If you're having a pretty crappy day. Let's just go one to one and we'll shake it up. I like to give it a good shake off the top to my glass and then just pour it in. Those ratios should fit your glass just perfectly. Cheers. Okay. Oh my God, that's damn, oh, that's really good. <laughs> so, I hope everyone enjoys their root au pair margarita. Please check us out on Facebook or on Instagram. We're at Root Crafted on Instagram. We love the followers. We post new recipes all the time, kind of ideas, um, how to entertain for the holidays. Or on Facebook, obviously, it's Root Crafted as well. We'd love you for you to follow us and just check us out. We're a female owned company. We're a big supporter of small business and Chris and Taylor have been fantastic to us. So thank you, Difference Card. And thank you to everyone enjoying this au pair margarita. Cheers, Diane. Mm. Great drink. Cheers. I do have to say we should play a drinking game again, Chris. <laughs> What's the word this week? And I think it should be two words, digital sales. <laughs> I like it. So like every that. time we talk about digital sales, I wanted you guys a drink, okay? <laughs> you can keep saying, see, I just said it, digital sales, digital sales. Let's go, let's keep drinking. Thanks so much, guys, and we really appreciate it, and I hope you love this drink as much as I do. And I love this spicy rim on it. Mm. Diane, awesome drink. Thank you for showing us the way there, and thanks for the great mixers. Uh, before I let you go, I'm gonna ask 
uh, Jen and Mario a lot of tough questions today. I've got really a, one tough question for you though. Are we doing brown tequila or clear tequila? What What's the preferred methodology See, here? The brown tequila is more of like a sipping tequila. I don't really think you want to mix that with anything. So I would go more clear, but I kind of went in the middle. So mine's not clear, but it's not brown. I did the Reposado for my Patron. Yeah. But it's really whatever you like, Chris. It's your world. We're all drinking in it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you again, Diane. We appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. Thanks so much, guys. Awesome. Thank you, Diane. We're getting great feedback in the chat. Everyone is loving it. Digital sales, digital sales. <laughs> Poor Jen, she's got a like whole rest of her work day left. <laughs> All right, why don't we shift gears now? And uh, we're gonna start with the, uh, the business conversation. And before we ask Jen and Mario their opinions, we wanna ask you all, how in this past 12 months, in the past year, how has your new business process changed? And uh, why don't we launch a poll? Go ahead, Taylor. Perfect. You guys should see a poll question popping up. How has your new business process changed over the past year? Video skills are helping you grow. Are you waiting on in-person meetings to return? Is your life like Zoom, 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 you're bouncing from one to the next? Or has social selling been a huge lifesaver for you? So let us kind of know where you're at with things. We'll give everyone just a couple more seconds to cast their vote here. Seeing a lot of Zoom. I'm glad that we could make this, this Zoom fun. I know everyone has got Zoom fatigue. All right, let's close it out here. I'm gonna share the results with you guys. 28% video skills are helping you grow. 3% are waiting on in-person, okay. 64% with Zoom, 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 and 5% with social selling. Taylor, great poll there and uh, interesting results. I mean, I think everybody is getting used to the Zoom situation and using that as a technique to communicate with customers and prospects. It was actually a pretty interesting uh, article and uh, post that Kurt put out, one of Mario's colleagues, about how Zoom doesn't count. It's not a technically a, a digital selling technique. It's, it's really just a tool that we're all using to communicate. So with that, Mario, I'm going to I pose the same question to you first. How are you seeing the new business process change over this past year? What, what techniques and process changes have you seen occur in the market? Great question, uh, Chris. Well, so for all the brokers that are out there, listen, there's a couple of things that have impacted you guys uh, that have made some significant differences and as well as that have cross uh, pollinated across almost nearly every industry out there, um, uh, Chris. And that is we've seen uh, sellers and brokers, specifically producers, be responsible for looking at new ways to engage with their buyers and or new ways to expand within the relationship. So what do I mean by that? Clearly, we all are using Zoom. So that's that's a given. That's that's table stakes, right? Like that, that's 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 something that we can't move away from. But what we've also seen is producers that are out there have really focused in on leveraging video video communication tools to do asynchronous communication. So if we can't see somebody face to face, we can't shake their hand if you would, we can't give them a hug, we can't take them out to dinner, we can't uh, have a lunch with them, we can't break bread, those types of things. What we need to be thinking about is actually how to still build that trust so that we can continue to grow the portfolio and to expand our, our business. And that comes with things like asynchronous video communication, meaning I create a video, I send it to you via email, as an example, and you receive it and you're seeing my smile, you're seeing my face, my eyes, my facial expressions, my gestures, uh, you're hearing the things that um, you want somebody to hear and take away from. And the important part here to understand right here, Chris, is if you think about an email, it's very one dimensional. You're only using one sense to be able to, on the receiving side, to be able to um, engage with that particular email as an example. And that is just your vision. But if you actually brought video into it, now you're using both hearing as well as vision to be able to engage with your targeted audience. So that's one area. Another huge area has been, of course, leveraging social media uh, to be able to engage with buyers. It is when done correctly, 
and done the right way, you can really start growing and building out your network and you can start mapping out even within accounts and understand, you know, the levels above, the levels to the side, the levels below, of all the folks that you need to work with. So I think a lot of producers that are out there need to be focused on not just the basics. The basics are use the phone for prospecting or engaging with buyers, use email. Uh, those are the basics. But we need to be thinking about how can I build trusted relationships quicker, faster, better than my competition like that. And that is utilizing techniques and services like you guys have done at the Difference Card, which have done an amazing job at, and that is utilizing video and social to be able to engage with buyers. Yeah, great point, Mario. And uh, one of the interesting stats you were throwing out there during one of our training sessions was just how prevalent YouTube is as a search engine, right? We all think of Google as the main search engine when people are looking for how can I purchase competitive health insurance, but YouTube is such a powerful tool and you need to be able to do video right to have a presence on YouTube. So great point, Mario. Um, Jen, same question to you. Why don't we, we pivot there and uh, how has your process changed? Great, happy to jump in. Well, I think where I first start with this, so if we say new business process, I ask people and restrain myself that before we just jump to process, let's at least do a quick check-in on the new business. So what is the product or service or solution that you're even offering? So I would refer to that as the product. And then the process is really your pitch. I maybe used to go to a networking meeting or I went in person or I took someone to lunch or now I'm using Zoom as a vehicle or something else. That's kind of that process. And both for myself, as well as the clients I work with, I've, I've said, look, yes, we need to do a couple of things at the same time, but let's not miss an opportunity to do a check-in to make sure that the product, the offer is still a solution to the problem that my ideal customer still has. So I think it's a quick pause and to say, okay, what is my offer? And then how am I going to communicate it? And we're going to talk about a lot of different ways today around how to get that message across. But if it's not working, I would invite you to say before you say, well, LinkedIn doesn't work or video doesn't work, you might step back a minute. So a quick example for brokers, it could be that as a result of this huge group exercise we've all gone through pandemic, that you used to create contrast um, via high touch in-person on-site customer service. I don't know that as many buyers today consider that a must have. It, it could be that that is not as important. So whether I'm talking to somebody the good old days over lunch or in their boardroom, or I'm using video to communicate it, I think those are the things that you just need to step back and, and kind of refresh. When it comes to the actual then um, pitch itself, my own personal experience has been in terms of the sales process that by leveraging very easy to access, easy to implement uh, tools, people have gotten to know me and decide if I'm their cup of tea and to decide if they wanna work with me before I've ever even talked to them or knew they existed on planet Earth. So sitting in the dining room, maybe five months ago, cell phone rings, I answer the phone, it's a senior person from a large regional brokerage firm. Hey, I've gotten to know you while watching you on LinkedIn and will you come and speak at our conference? And so that changes the sales process, right? So then you think, wow, this is super interesting to me. So I think we'll talk about the ways that those things can um, happen, um, but those are the couple of things I wanted to share. Yeah, Jen, I think making sure that you're framing it right and that you've got the right solution too is something very important, right? You can't forget about that regardless of the, the way you're delivering it. Right. Um, you so could blame the wrong thing, you know, because yeah. like you got to diagnose the right problem. And so it's breaking those things apart to understand exactly where those issues may be as you are testing. That, that's the other thing I've learned. We're not great in our business at, we, we like to have work groups and um, sit in rooms and decide a process and we're going to roll it out. And then we don't necessarily a B test and then refine. And I think in this environment, getting more used to trying things and adapting, um, is, is going to, um, 
be much more successful than pick a thing. Great point. Maria, did you have a, another point to make on this topic? Yeah, Chris, I was just going to come back to something that you, you mentioned earlier and that um, you know, Jen was also alluding to. And first of all, we haven't said the word digital sales. So um, we needed to say the word digital sales. <laughs> Take a drink, everybody. Hold on. Let me get that going. Here we go. Mm. All right. So digital sales, I said that three times. You should have taken three drinks. Um, but one of the things that I really want everybody to think about that's happening right now, and, and you alluded to this when you talked about YouTube, think of this in a very practical sense. Uh, if you think of you know, today's buyer, there are four cardinal attributes of today's buyer. They're uh, digitally uh, connected, they're socially engaged, they're mobile attached, and they're video hungry. All right, so let's, let's, let's bring that down and let's focus in on these particular topics, especially for producers. They're digitally connected. Uh, by the end of this year, it's predicted that 6.8 devices, each of us will have, well, sorry, we'll have each 6.8 connected devices. So you gotta ask yourself, Oh my gosh, even in a remote environment uh, where some people may be going back and most other business professionals are still holding back, um, why do we have 6.8 devices? <laughs> First, that's a laptop, a phone, an iPad, an iWatch, any of those types of things. What are we doing? We're pushing and pulling information. We're constantly pushing and pulling information. In a socially engaged environment, believe it or not, uh, the, the um, identification of what people are doing on social media has gone through the roof and, and engagement has gone through the roof as a result of, unfortunately, this environment of a remote, in, a remote situation. And that's not going to change. So what should we as producers be thinking about in this digital selling environment? Hey, I didn't say sales, I said selling. Uh, so in this digital selling environment, we should be thinking about how do I show up in the areas that our buyers are at and engaged on, whether that's Facebook, whether that's um, uh, LinkedIn, or whether that's Twitter. How do I show up there so that I'm front and center in terms of being able to be that face and that name? The other thing I want everybody thinking about is we're mobile attached. Believe it or not, you may walk from your office inside your house to your kitchen, and what is the one thing that you bring with you? That's right. Chris showed it up. He just held it up. His phone. We bring our phone 15 feet away or 20 feet away from where we're going. Now, why are we doing that? Because somehow, somewhere, we're going to miss a very important phone call or a text or an email or something. Or while we're getting our stuff in the kitchen or water, whatever it might be, we're still checking emails. And so we have to be cognizant of that as a, as a selling community. We need to be thinking about, okay, so if someone's mobile attached, Chris, that means that they're looking at content and they only want to be doing what's called one scroll touch. You're going to scroll one time. You've got 40 seconds, which is the average adult digital, uh, uh, the average adult span for a digital task, 40 seconds to capture that person's attention. And then you said it on, on, on YouTube. May, people may not know this, but the lar second largest search engine in the world is a little thing called YouTube happens to be owned by Google. 59% of executives report that they watch, 59% of executives, they watch at least one video per week on business related topics, at least one. So we as producers need to be really thinking about in this digital sales environment, there you go, take a drink, in this digital sales environment, how do we connect and engage with our buyers in such a way that maps to the modern buying techniques and, and, and methodologies? Yeah, great points, Mario. And I think that that 40 second window is big. I, it's almost shorter than that, right? You got to get their attention in the first five, 10 seconds to keep them watching. And then maybe you get 40 seconds out of them. But it is a very short window to capture somebody's attention on a video to keep them engaged and watching. And just great points, right? If, if business owners are watching video, we all need to be producing content. We need to be giving them videos. Otherwise, they're watching your competitors' videos. So definitely a great point to, uh, to think about. Why don't we uh, take a quick pause? Um, let's move on to our next question, which is related to tools and new sales enablement tools that you may be using to be successful in this digital selling environment. So Taylor, I know you just launched another poll here. Yep, we've got it live. So go ahead and cast your vote 
what tools are you using? Are you using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, Zoom Info, OneMob, which is a video platform that Mario um, exposed us to, Sales Loft, or other? If you're using something that's not listed here, drop it in the chat. I want to hear what types of tools you are using, how you've pivoted, how you've adapted. So make sure to stick them in there so we can talk about those as well. It's like um, a lot of Sales Navigator. Yes, yeah. Not surprised to see Sales Navigator at the top of the list. Looks like half of you have voted. We'll give you guys a couple more seconds to cast your vote. We're really curious to see what's working for you these days. Interesting. Nobody hitting the sales loft button right mm -hmm. now. All right, let's share these results. So 44% with Sales Navigator, 29% with Zoom Info, 14% with One Mob, zero goose egg for Sales Loft. And then other, drop them in the chat. I want to see what you're using. All right, great results there, Taylor. And it really interesting. I think Sales Navigator is a very strong tool. We can talk about Zoom Info, all search-based tools. So a few of you using one mob already, some video-based tools. We'll talk more about that. Um, Jen, I'm going to uh, turn this question to you first now. So what sales enablement tools have you seen brokers use to be successful in this environment? Yeah, so I'd say um, for myself and the brokers I, I work with, um, even just LinkedIn, the, the core functionality, including the audio and using messaging that when they do a post, taking that next step to send it to somebody specifically with a custom message and not just relying on the algorithm that it will serve up a message or a post at a specific point in time. I know for myself, I underutilize Sales Navigator. That's kind of on my list to just improve uh, my um, leverage of that. In terms of tools and effectiveness, the number one thing I latched onto early is Prezi. Now for people who used Prezi a long time ago as kind of um, an upgrade from um, a PowerPoint and something static, Prezi video is extremely engaging. And how have I found both with clients and prospective customers has it worked? Because in environments like this, where you are um, have the opportunity to speak or talk to a group of people rather than becoming the little talking head up in the, the top uh, right corner. Um, you can interact and have your slides be behind you, alongside you. Zoom and some other tools are now catching up. But those are, you know, we want to think about how to maximize that interaction and to um, um, use a tool when you are presenting just to be really thoughtful that you are maximizing everything there. So Prezi um, would be that one. Um, subtitle, I can't live without. So if you were looking for something to post, um, particularly on LinkedIn, where you want it square and you want a title and you want transcripts, um, subtitle is super easy. And do not tell me you're too old or have no resources. Like I'm 53, I work for myself. You can't out veteran me in this industry. Like it is really easy and you can repurpose content. So if you do a long hour long thing, you take a one to no more than two minute clip you upload it to subtitle. Um, if anyone wants to check my LinkedIn yesterday, I had done a LinkedIn live day before yesterday. I took a two minute clip. I uploaded it to subtitle and literally within 20 minutes, I was able to have it and post it and reference Jason Bay, who you should all follow. He is fantastic on the specific skill of prospecting. Um, so there's that tool, um, subtitle. The next one would be any type of screen share you want. So whether it's Loom, whether it's Vimeo, everybody's coming out with something. But to the earlier points Mario and Chris made, if I'm responding to somebody's email, what I will often do is pull up their email and then use that recording to give some color. Hey, thank you for the inquiry. What I have found works best at the next stage in the process is for you and whoever else to jump on a call. And the things I'm curious about learning more about are A, B, and C. It gives them some perspective, a flavor for how I work. And one of the things I always focus on with my clients is how do you create contrast and stand out from somebody else and foreshadow what it's like working with you. So I think whatever that I'm kind of agnostic to the tool, but 
you know, maybe you're not ready to do LinkedIn Live or record an update just yourself, but using that um, either with your prospects, your clients, or even your coworkers when you're trying to teach them something super effective. And then um, finally, um, video ask. Video ask is an amazing tool. It allows you to um, get input and exchange quick video, audio, or text to um, interact with your customers or um, prospective customers. So I'm happy to fill in the blanks on that, but video ask has been amazing way for me to interact with clients and potential ones. Jen, some great uh, tips there. Prezi's one that is on my list. I have seen how you've used it. It's really impressive to have like little images coming up as you're presenting. That's powerful. I have not been able to figure it out yet. I, that's on my list of things to try. And as uh, subtitles, another one, that's a great tool. Great points there. And then video ask, I, I agree. That's a great way to easily interact and get a prospect or a client to use video and respond to you and create that face-to-face -face interaction that I think we're all craving right now. That's right. And I think, you know, getting creative, how we interact with a customer, you know, so if at the scene of the crime, there's disconnects between client service and a customer, video ask could be a very easy, additional, optional way for them to communicate. And you might eliminate 10 other emails by them having a vehicle and five other meetings because everything doesn't have to happen in 30 minute increments, even though Outlook defaults to that. So giving people another avenue the way they want to connect with you and personalizing the experience. And these are very, very low cost options. Yeah, great point. All right, uh, let's shift to Mario here. Mario, what sales enablement tools have you seen be successful for prospectors out there in the market? Great question. So uh, we are all about the prospecting and some of the tools that are out there. And I've got some great articles that I think um, will be a really big value to the organization, to all of you guys that are out there, all the producers out there. So I'm just going to throw it into the chat right now. Um, I'm going to go through some of these and there are two reference points that you can click on right there to the attendees. Um, take a look at those, but a couple of things that come to mind, especially when it comes to prospecting. So a lot of the things we have inside these two articles um, would really you, you want to roll up to your, your, your sales leadership or the leadership team in the organization. Um, but a couple of them that really come to mind that you should be thinking about is a sales productivity tool that um, is actually created by Vingresso. So we, 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 our tagline is type less, sell more, and it's called Fly Message. We've got a ton of great uh, scripts that we utilize for connecting on LinkedIn, for being able to engage with different buyers. It's a free tool, 100% free. You just got to use it with Chrome. Uh, and it is an auto text expander tool so that you can type in a short uh, shortcut. For example, I just type in the words book a meeting. And when I type in book a meeting, it puts a, a whole paragraph along with my calendar so that if I want to be able to schedule a meeting with somebody, I've got an online calendar link and a message that's already pre-populated. It's fabulous. Um, you'll love that particular one, uh, that particular tool that will help you. You can use it anywhere online um, in a, uh, in a, uh, on a web setting. And I just threw the link inside there for that. So that's one of them that I would encourage you to take a look at. Another one that's out there is for leveraging with LinkedIn. And you'll see it in one of the articles that I put out there. It's called Crystal Knows. Uh, and Crystal does really know. In fact, if you uh, uh, sign up for an account with Crystal Knows, use it on yourself, meaning go to your LinkedIn profile, let it read your um, uh, LinkedIn profile along with every other piece of information that's out there on the worldwide internet. And, and watch and see if it nails your personality. Why do I tell you about this, about this particular tool? Well, if you're trying to engage with a particular buyer and you want to be able to know what are their hot buttons, what are their likes, what are their distastes, how should you approach them? Would they like to be um, uh, referred to as hello Mario versus hey Mario? Then you're going to see um, that Crystal is an AI tool that allows you, to, it, 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 it uh, serves up content to you that says, hey, Mario would prefer for you to say, hey, Mario, because he's that casual type of guy. But if you were selling to somebody else or you're you know, reaching out to somebody else, they may be more of a formal type of individual. And so Crystal actually does a really good job in being able to um, get that information. Um, uh, uh, let's see, Jen mentioned a couple of the tools. I call them video sales tools. Now, if you're an, a, a senior leader on, the, on this call, you should probably be looking at tools like one mob or hippo video uh, as a way to be able to engage and Vingresso can certainly help assist in that um, in helping the video skills. 
But if you're a single individual broker that's out there, there are some cool free tools that you have to pay for, like Loom and or Dub, right? There's some, there's some free tools that if you want to do more with them and have more videos that you create, then you've got to you know, have a paid for account. And it allows you at least at a minimum to be able to actually create some videos and engage with your, your target buyer. Um, the one that was uh, thrown up there earlier on the poll said Zoom Info. Now, um, I'm a big fan of Seamless.ai. Now, Seamless.ai is a competitor to Zoom Info. Uh, and uh, Seamless.ai actually allows you to download a Chrome extension. And then when you're looking at anyone's LinkedIn profile, you literally click on a find button and it will find that information, that, that email and that uh, contact information right there from within LinkedIn. If you're a HubSpot user, there is direct integration into HubSpot as well. So if you have your HubSpot CRM as a tool, I really, really, really like that one from a, uh, a finding someone's contact information uh, on there. Um, and then there's a whole slew of other um, tools that I put inside there, but those are my three top tools that I would give you guys um, to be able to take away um, and, and be able to leverage. And I think there's, oh, I know, there's one more. If you aren't already using a meeting booking link system. Uh, you may have heard of tools like Time Trade, Calendly, uh, even HubSpot has their own uh, meeting uh, integration uh, link tool. My favorite tool is Calendly. And it is, by the way, free. And it's a great way to be able to engage with buyers. Listen, instead of playing email scheduling volleyball and uh, frustrating buyers of the back and forth, back and forth on emails, one of the things that we teach our um, students when they're going through our program is when you send a message, you can say, well, here are three dates and times, Chris, that, we're, we can, that I'm available. Hey, listen, if that doesn't work, um, attached is my calendar link that allows you to be able to schedule a meeting when it's most convenient to you. And that's a really great way. Um, and right now, if you look at our booking rate using our calendar tool, we have a 40% booking rate, view to booking rate when you use that particular tool, it's phenomenal. So Calendly is free, uh, but there's a, quite a few other paid for tools that are out there for both purchase as an organization. And of course you can upgrade on Calendly or Time Trade. Taylor, I actually just thought of one, one more tool no, that I'm also is free. Yeah. And it's you know really for those people who might work in a smaller agency or firm, or you work for a really large one, but um, marketing or you know, it's just more of a process you need to kind of help yourself, Canva. On Canva, you can go on, it's a free tool. You can, on the, with a free tool, you can go on and things like, you know, a quote card or some things that actually look really fancy, you'll find out even the largest brands in the country are probably using Canva. So you too can make something look a bit more professional, post documents, do some things and do it on your own without taking too much time away from sales. But if you need to kind of hack something, to get creative. Canva is great. Yes, Jen, Canva. I love Canva. Um, I send my sales team there all the time when they're like, hey, can you help me create something? I'm like, not right now, but go to Canva. If you can't figure it out, then come back to me. So it's awesome. It's very user-friendly. That's a good one, Jen. Yeah, great tip there. And just back to Mario's Calendly tool. I think that's one we recently rolled out ourselves, a difference card. And we saw the need as you're doing more video interaction and just the efficiencies you gain. So if you're not using a calendar tool today, check out Calendly or one of the others. You gain efficiencies, but the booking rate definitely goes up. I actually had a lead come through on our website this week, a charter school. They wanted to talk about Difference Card and we used that Calendly tool. We booked a meeting within a couple of minutes that day. And it just saves all that back and forth about I'm free now or then. So just efficiencies, booking percentages goes up. That's a simple one that everybody should be using to really help to book more meetings and gain some efficiencies. Great tips. There's a lot of info in the chat that uh, Taylor is throwing out there. We'll summarize this too in some follow-up emails, but a lot of good tools to take from here. So let's shift to our third uh, conversation question. And Taylor, why don't you throw up the chat there. We want to just talk about how have you transformed your traditional sales skills? On the webinar today, we have some incredible salespeople and their whole careers have been in-person selling for the most part, right? Some people great on the phone, others have done webinars in the past, but I think the majority 
of our producers have been doing in-person selling until the last year. So how have you transformed those skills and transferred them to a virtual selling environment? Looks like we're getting a lot of uh, webinar with cameras on, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you got some options here, webinars with camera on, maybe you're doing one-on-one -on -one phone conversations, that's still a big uh, thing for you. Your presentation skills just are transferring to video production skills, like you're taking those and you're using them in a different way. Or are you doing outdoor meetings only? Are you getting together outside? That one doesn't have any hits yet, which I thought more people would have started doing outdoor meetings. Maybe it's just not warm enough yet where everyone's at. <laughs> yeah, summer's coming. We're just getting out of a tough winter. <laughs> the outdoor meetings are coming. Yes. All right, we're gonna wrap the poll up here. Let's share these results. 80% are making sure they engage with their clients with cameras on. We've got 9% doing phone calls. 11% are using those presentation skills and turning them into video skills. No one's doing outdoor meetings yet. All right, very good. So I'm gonna go back to Jen with this one. Jen, you've actually met me in person. We've done some in-person uh, selling together. Uh, Mario, we've only done the virtual thing. So Jen, why don't we start with you? Have you taken those in-person sales skills? And I know you're an incredible presenter. You've presented to our team. So have you transferred those to the virtual selling environment? Right, I really gave this some thought. I thought, well, you know, traditionally I was able to build my, um, my successful sales career being an extrovert and being curious and being a connector. So connecting solutions with people and just really benefiting from, okay, that abundance mindset and I'm going to connect people and in that interaction, um, good things will happen. And so I had to figure out a different way to put those um, extrovert connecting tendencies to good use. And so one of the things I did was think about, all right, if I can't be with my insurance friends in person over the past year, now might be an opportunity for me to expand my network, look at the business a little differently, going back to my earlier comments about taking a fresh look at what solutions I even wanna offer, who else my network needs to know. Um, I actually just this week started introducing, I'm saying it's my 12 quarantine friends, people I met sitting in my dining room that I just went out. And so this process of, you know, how do you identify the people that might make sense for you to know and comment on their, um, on their posts, engage, show natural curiosity, ask who their ideal clients are, find ways to show up and help and get to know them. And there are ways. So I had to kind of take what I knew how to do but deploy it differently. The second thing is I really dug in and was working with customers on how do we increase our effectiveness in closing deals. A very specific piece of the sales process um, emerged as something that needed some fine tuning, probably needed fine tuning before the pandemic, but bright light by virtual pitches. And that was the effectiveness of the business introduction. And so that is something I've paid particular focus on. In fact, I just built a like standalone workshop on it called Shift Your Intro, because as I examined it, it was like, why do these problems keep coming up, right? So in a new business setting when it's virtual, so, so I've had strong presentation skills, but if you only have a minute or two to convince somebody that you are worthwhile of continuing a conversation, that they believe you, we can't squander our minutes with the mic. And whether that's for yourself or you're bringing in a team, how do we all make sure we're not using two minutes to recite our resume, which is what happens when we don't have intention. And so I think that's a very particular piece of the process that anybody here who is thinking about not only new business setting, but how do you introduce yourself to the new chief people officer, the CFO when they drop into your meeting, you know, they're going to make an assessment very quickly about whether, whether or not they trust what you're about to say. And how do we leverage those minutes? So that's a very particular part of that process that I've put together and I've just posted it. I've only been working with my clients, but Anyone who's on this, if you send me a note, um, a message through LinkedIn, I'll send you back a coupon code. It's like a blue light special because I'm drinking. Like, I don't know, I'll make something up, 50% off or something like that. Under a hundred bucks to refine in an hour in a workshop 
to redesign your introduction. So I think that's my hot tip for this part. Jen, great tip. And that goes back to just the talking about video too, right? I know we're, we're talking about more business interactions and presentations, but it's that same concept that you have a very small window, five to seven seconds to make a first impression and keep them engaged, right? Especially with these Zoom settings where people can start to do other things very quickly. If you intro well and you get their attention, they're going to listen to other things that you're going to say down the road. So great point and uh, exciting uh, blue light special there. For everybody. Well, and like how the bill becomes a law, right? There's the prospecting digitally, and then there's the nurturing digitally, but then ultimately we are getting to the finish line and interacting. And I think some, most of our prospects are not, not all of them will come back to the office. So even if you are there or part of your team is there, part of their people will still be at home for a variety of reasons. So being able to maximize um, virtual presentation is not going away, I don't think. Agreed. All right, Mario, there's a rumor you've done some big uh, keynote sessions. You've done some in-person pre presenting in your day. Um, how have you transferred those skills to the virtual environment? And what are your clients doing? What are your uh, sellers doing out there? Great question. So um, a couple of things that I probably want to comment on. We did uh, some research here. Ooh, that was, uh, I think about two months ago, we finished, we completed that um, Vingresso research. And a couple of things I want to just give everybody some thoughts on is we asked the question, where do you want to work after um, COVID? Um, it, it, remote full-time, three days a week remote, two days a week remote, one day a week remote, or office full-time. And this is a pretty interesting astronomical crazy number. Um, we had uh, hundreds of respondents into this um, study. 4% said they're interested in going back to the office full time. 4%. 54% said remote full time all the way. 26% said three days a week remote. So we're talking about at least 75% of um, buyers in this case that were surveyed um, identified that they want to be able to be back at least three days a week or more um, back at home and being remote. So this really impacts what we do today going forward and everything in how we engage um, in terms of um, uh, being focused on creating revenue. Um, so what are some of the things that people are doing? Well, we've talked about um, a number of things that people are doing, and that is, you know, making sure that they're engaging with their buyers the way the buyers want to be engaged with, right? Um, we've also not mentioned a couple of other things related to digital sales. Take that drink. <laughs> Take that drink. And um, those are the things like, for example, how are you leveraging what we call the omni-channel approach to prospecting? So we've said phone, email, We've said, uh, we talked about video a bit. We've talked about social selling a bit. What else is there? Well, you may not even be thinking about this, but there is this thing called text messaging. Uh, those are some th ways that we can engage with buyers today. And you're probably already doing that. But here's the interesting part about this, Chris. In answer to your question, uh, producers such as yourself, brokers such as, such as yourself, we are trying to figure out, if you think of uh, those five main ways to be able to engage with a buyer, which is the way that Johnny likes to be engaged with versus Mary versus Susie versus Billy versus Mark, right? There, every single person has a different way to be able to engage. And what I want to encourage you to think about is, is you should be recording these. For example, one of our largest customers is a cybersecurity software company. I can assure you without a doubt, they spend hundreds of thousands of dollars with us. Uh, and if I were to email this executive sponsor, he never responds, never. In two years, hundreds of thousands of dollars with us each year, never responds to an email. But if I text him between 5.30 and 8.30 p.m., guess what? I get a response. I have another one that um, has spent um, near a million dollars with us to launch a global sales training program, right? And this organization, it is the CSO. He has 2,000 sellers. If I email him, I get a one word to max five word response. But if I engage with him on social media through social media on the back end, we're now having a full on conversation. So our clients are really focusing in on and individual sellers, business owners, brokers, they have to be very focused on what 
it is that you or that this buyer and that buyer want to, how they want to be engaged with. That's one of my, one of my tips I want to leave you. And I want you to consider this important uh, statistic. Did you know that between February 2020 and February 2021, emails went up by 40.2 billion emails around the world? Marketing emails from organizations such as mine or even the difference card that you know, brought you here to this webinar, marketing emails increased by 62%. Virtual events increased by 1,000%. Ad spend was by 22%. And of course, sales calls naturally have gone up as well. Um, and the number that uh, Microsoft identified was that... Um, uh, online meetings went up by 144% on average per person. Holy crud. Like, you, what? Right? So with all this, we have to be very aware that when we're sending an email, a phone call, a text, a this, a that, that all this is coming at the same exact buyer, which is the same exact thing that you're dealing with. And you've got to be able to pierce right through that noise and think of ways by using video as an example, which is part of our sales training program. It's a skill. Chris has alluded to this a couple of times. You said it takes five to seven seconds. In our training, we, it's seven to 14 seconds to be able to, uh, 15 seconds, excuse me, to capture someone's attention on that particular video. But when you do it right, you can increase your meetings ratio and bookings by sometimes in cases of 35 plus percent that we've seen with our clients. So it's a lot of data that I just threw at you. Hopefully you're, you're capturing it all. I'm going to throw one more article inside here uh, into the chat, and it's probably um, it's our second uh, longest article on our site. Um, it's all about prospecting, um, which I think all of us are interested in. And um, we go through everything from cadences inside there to the data point that the data points that I just mentioned to you. So take a look at that. It's a really long, beefy article, and I think you'll find a lot of value out of that. Yeah, Mario, the personalization factor. Some people have lost that when we've gone virtual, right? The, the need to do these mass emails takes away from that, that personalization that you used to do when you were meeting with people in person, right? You would make sure that you knew how to communicate with that person before a meeting. You've got to get that back. And that personalization, whether it's text message, video, email, phone, finding a way to get through to a buyer is very, very important. So great point there. And then really interesting uh, comment just about the percentage of people that want to go back. And that's a great segue to our next poll question and our final one. So Taylor, why don't you launch that? We're wondering, how are all of you feeling about the fall selling season, right? I know we don't want to talk about it yet. We just got through the, the fourth quarter, but we're, before you know it, in a few months, we will be into the selling seasons. For some of you, especially our, our California team, it, it starts super early. By August, they are in full swing on the one-one business. So, what are you feeling like the selling season is going to be like? Is it all web-based, in-person, or a mix? What are you thinking? What's the poll like, Taylor? It's looking good. It's not too surprising. We're, you know, the majority is coming in here with a mix of in-person and virtual presentations. Um, no, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I want to see everyone in person again. So I'm, I'm hoping you guys are going to will this into existence that we'll be able to go back to some in-person meetings. All right, let's go ahead and close it out so we can share these results here. So we've got 10% said they're just going to stay web-based only. 6% are going to go back to in-person when everyone's vaccinated. We've got 80% going to do a mix and 4%. They feel good. Their social selling pipeline is strong. We need to connect with this 4%. <laughs> All right, great results there. And we've only got five minutes left. So um, Jen, why don't you quickly just tell us what do you think the future has got, right? Go into your crystal ball and what is this fall selling season gonna look like to you just quickly in a minute? Sure, what it's amplified for me and um, clarified is the importance of niching and even though it can feel very scary for salespeople who maybe for the last year have not hit the goals they wanted, I find it difficult to imagine being able to operate in eight or nine or 10 different ways, video, LinkedIn, all these different things, and trying to be all things to all people. So going back to the idea of product, 
taking a beat before you hit the even busier season and clarifying who your ideal client is so that you can be crystal clear in your messaging on who you serve and how you can help. I think that we can only, you know, we can't do a million different things and pitch it a million different ways. I think we just, I am not a, I was a history major, not a math major, but I just don't think that's effective. So niche, niche, niche. Great point. Uh, Mario, final comments here. And what do you see for the future? So I'm going to give you two things and I'll do this very fast. Right inside of the chat, I put my email address inside here. Um, I'm suggesting that you send me an email. Now I'm out of the office. I'm actually in Hawaii. So this is actually where I'm at. Uh, and um, I'm out of the office. And when you send me an email, just put the difference card in the subject line, right? Um, or different difference card webinar so that I know who you are. I promise you what you will get back from me is something you've never seen before and it'll happen instantly. Uh, and it's my out of office reply. All right, so go ahead and send me an email, mario at bingresso.com. Uh, and of course, I'm only out of the office for, you know, the next couple, next, uh, till next week. And uh, the other thing that I, I um, want to leave you with is um, something to help you out in terms of helping you do better at LinkedIn. Um, this is a resource that you, I know you're going to get on the PDF file that um, Taylor will send out. But right inside of here if, uh, is a book, uh, Vivica Von Rosen, who is one of our founders. She is arguably the most well-known social media influencer on LinkedIn. Um, and her book, which is on Amazon, it's uh, whatever it is, 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon. We're giving it away free. So if you want to know some ways of how you can rock LinkedIn and help build your personal brand, go at it and feel free to be able to um, grab hold of that book. It really will help. Mario, great points and uh, actually really cool out of office video. I did email you this week and I got a little panicked. I'm like, wait, is he coming to the webinar on Thursday? And I, I listened to your video, really well done. So I encourage you all email Mario. He's got a great uh, message to share with all of you. All right, with that, we are going to wrap things up here. I'm going to just share my screen one last time and uh, hope you got some great tips and skills from this. Mario, Jen, great job awesome insight. And we would love you all to join us for our next uh, broker webinar. We're going to do one in June on June 10th. And that webinar will be focused on a new solution from the difference card called the dental difference. We're going to attack the self-funded dental market with our own spin on how to save employers money on dental insurance. So register here. We're actually giving away uh, root mixers and a free rocks glass. So register, Taylor, why don't you throw that in the chat box? And again, appreciate you all joining us today. Yeah, I'll drop it in. Thank you guys so much for attending. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Mario. You guys gave us My so, pleasure. so many Thank good you. resources. Um, I threw a lot at you guys in the chat. I'm going to send you a really nice little neat PDF at the end. So don't panic. You will get everything. I'm going to drop the link right now for you guys to register for this webinar. So I hope to see you guys in June. Yep. First 250, get the free glass in June. And we're looking forward to seeing you all then. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Thanks, everyone.